I was working on a transmitter data sheet. It was a fun activity to do. There I found out a statement which said that the transmitter output must be Namur NE43 compliant. You know what does this mean? When an engineer reads this, what should come to his mind? What an engineer should understand is, this is a smart way of communication between the transmitter and the DCS. This gives all the diagnostic features. But the best thing about this is, it does so smartly that you don't need any single extra device to be added. Within the 4 to 20 milliampere band, there are some smart techniques which are used which transmit all the diagnostic features of the transmitter to the DCS or the control system. And you know what is the best part? Almost eight to nine features of where the transmitter can fail can be communicated to DCS or the control system. And the best thing is, if I have to define this in one sentence, I would say Namur any 43 acts as a doctor and that also not any ordinary doctor. This can act as a doctor which can know the problem without even touching the patient or the transmitter. Yes, that is the magic of any 43 standard. And what I'm going to explain is as per the APA RP551 explanation. So this is as per this recommended and most renowned standard. For reference and further reading, this is as per page number 25 and table number 2 where they have defined the Namur NE43 standard and its signal protocol. So let's get started. Now imagine that this is your transmitter and this is your control system DCS and there's a communication to it. In your DCS you notice that there is some issue. There's this X come here showing that you know there is some fault in the transmitter. So you go to the field to find out what could be the possible issue. Now you, you might come that there are a lot of issues that could come to your mind. It could be that the wire is shorted or there's an open wire or there could be the under range or over range value that is why you're getting an incorrect reading to the system or it could be because the transmitter has failed. So let us look how with the help of Namur we can understand these issues without touching the transmitter. So first we'll get into the under range and the over range parameter and how Namur helps us in that. So here as we discussed, this is our transmitter DCS communication and imagine that the transmitter is calibrated for 10 to 20 bar signal. So here we can assume that for 4 milliampere, you should get 10 bar and when it's 4 milliampere and 20 bar when it is 20 milliampere. So this is how your transmitter is calibrated. Seems very simple, right? Now we add extra pressure to the transmitter and this is 30 bar. Now, in such a case, should the transmitter transmit to DCS 20 millibar because that's the maximum limit? No, that's incorrect, right? Because it's not 20 bar, which is the pressure applied to transmitter. It is 30 bar. So this would be an incorrect reading to the control system. So what do we do in such a case? Or let's take the other example. If it's 5 bar, less than the lower range calibrated value, can it show 4 milliamperes? No, that's again incorrect. So for such cases, what do we do? How do we tell this or share to the control system as to what is the issue and this is not between the range that we have calibrated the instrument for? For such case, Namur has made a special signal band to add such a signal to DCS. Let's take this example. So for lesser value, which is from 5 bar, the signal value from 4 to 3.8 is used and here for 30 anything which is an over range value the value used is up till 25 milliamperes now you would notice here that this band especially gives you any signal if it's from 4 to 3.8 means any signal which is lesser than your lower range value would give you this band anything which is above the band which is about 20 bar will give you the signal between 20 milliamperes to 20.5 milliamperes sounds simple right and now let's look as to this definition so this green band defines normal operation and the blue band would define under range and over range operation 
I hope you're finding these videos valuable. So every Saturday I produce a new video and I am sure that you would find these videos valuable and useful. If yes, then please subscribe and especially press the bell icon. So every Saturday you can receive a new video. I hope these videos are making a positive difference in your career and in your knowledge base. Let's look into the next case now. So here we were trying to figure out, okay, we figured out one thing, which is the over range and the under range issue. Now let's look at the next issue, which is the transmitter failure. Let's look into what happens when the transmitter is failed. How do we get to know that information? So the same system or setup is used, but now the transmitter has failed. It's broken. Its health is not good. There is some issue happened inside the transmitter. It could be any circuitry fault, etc. Now, what do you do? So in this case, you would again not get the correct signal. So let's take for our example, the normal conditions which we had discussed and the under range over range that we had discussed above this. What will happen is there's another signal band, which is used by Namur, which is defined between 3.8 milliamperes to 3.6 milliamperes. And on the upper side, it is defined between 20 2 milliamperes till 20.5 milliamperes. So this range, this red range here you see defines for any fault in transmitter. So if the transmitter is faulty, you will get this red range. If there's an under range and over range value, you would get the blue range. Now you might assume that why are there two uh, red zones? Any one should have been sufficient. This they have kept for user preference. So the user can either keep it upscale or downscale. That is what it is referred to. So if you want the transmitter would go to upscale if it fails or it would go to downscale if it fails. But the best thing is in case you define it as upscale and later you want to change it, then this is site configurable. So there's no issue with respect to this uh, settings. It can be done on site as well and it can be pre done via the vendor as well. So this red zone defines the transmitter failure. Now let's now let's look into the case where we were. So we have figured out over range, under range transmitter failure. Now let's look at another interest. Let's look at the another interesting thing, which is open wire. For such a case, if you would notice, let's get to first what we've already learned. So we've learned these three things, normal, under range, over range and the transmitter failure. Now let's look into the next case. Imagine a rat comes in and has eaten up your wire. So it's either partially eaten or completely eaten. Now in that case, what would happen? You would not get any signal or very partial signal to the DCS. That band is defined between 3.6 milliamperes to 0 milliamperes. So here in this case, if you find such, if there's no ad, no signal at all, or there is a little signal between 3.6 to 0, you can understand that the wire has been cut somewhere partially or completely. This uh, indication can help you figure out that you don't need to replace the transmitter or you don't have to uh, change the circuit. You basically have to check the path of the wire and find out where the wire has to be replaced. So this yellow zone defines your open wire. Ah, now let's get to the last interesting part of it, which is when the wire, that is when the wire is shorted. So let's look into that case now. Here, in this case, let's get to our normal things that we have learned. The green range is normal operation, the blue is under range, over range, and the red is transmitter failure. And finally, what we recently learned is your uh, zero milliamperes is in the case when you have the wire which is cut. Now getting to the next point, what if the wire is short as the red line so shows there? In that case, as we know that the high current would flow. So any current beyond 22 milliamperes, the control system would give you an alarm or an indication or the transmitter stating that there has been a short somewhere between the wiring system. So there is no issue with the transmitter or any other parameter. It seems like the, the wire path has been shorted. So this milliampere signal, which is greater than 22 milliampere would give you this indication of the wire being shorted. And thus we have defined the yellow portion as either being an open wire or a shorted wire. I hope you found these videos valuable. If you found these valuables, 
please consider subscribing and especially pressing the bell icon so you receive a new video every Saturday. I hope these videos are making a positive difference in your life. Also, I have written a free ebook on engineering standards. So, if you're interested to learn more about engineering standards, especially the most easiest ones to start with, then this ebook would be a go to guide for you. There have been almost 1500 plus downloads from people working in Shell, Dow, Technip, etc. So, I hope you might find this ebook valuable. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any concerns or if you have to add some points to it and I would love to help you whether it's through LinkedIn, my website or on the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video.